Hi guys, Peter Finch here, and this is the last of my Quest 4 350 videos. Now, over the last kind of three, four months, I've been doing lots of changes within my game, within my swing, to try and hit the ball 350 yards with a driver, and I succeeded. So the last two weeks, I've managed to hit quite a few shots over that mark, and what I wanted to do for you guys is a roundup and condense all this information down into one video of how you can change your game if you want to hit the ball further. So what I'm going to take you through is everything I've learned, give you that information, and you can mine that at will. Try and take different parts of what I've learned to try and implement into your game. So without further ado, let's get going. So step one, you need to make sure that you are physically capable of sustaining the amount of club head speed you need to hit the ball a long way. Now for me, that involved a lot of training. So stretching, strength, it involved changing so much about my physique because I knew the positions that I wanted to get in to try and get the ball that little bit further. So for a lot of people, this is gonna mean training, it's gonna mean stretching. Now I've done a few fitness videos, I'll throw the links up here as well, but it's certainly something I'm going to be doing more of in the future. But this is something you need to investigate yourself as well. You need to consult your doctor, make sure that you're able to do these changes. Get yourself a personal trainer, tell them about your goals and focus on the muscles that matter. So the core, the legs, the lower half especially is where you draw all your energy and power up from. So step one, make sure you're physically fit and capable and make sure that you are fit enough to perform these swing changes. So the second thing you need to do, guys, is make sure you have a club that you can achieve the distances with. Now, that is going to involve you getting club fitted. Now, what I did, I'm really, very lucky that I have a good relationship with many of the manufacturers, and they were giving me stuff to try. Now, the club that I achieved the distance with was a Titleist D3, cranked down to below 7 degrees, just about 6.75, an X-Stiff tip speed and motor shaft. Now, this was the right club for me, for what I needed to do. I also tried the R15, which was also very, very close. But you need to go away and you need to test different clubs. Now, I was quite comfortable getting a club which wouldn't be the most accurate, which this isn't. I don't hit it in the fairway as much as I did the G30, for example. But this went a lot further. Now, I was very, very focused on just getting the distance and compromising on that accuracy. But you need to do what's right for your game. If you want the distance and the accuracy, this might not be the right club for you. You need to test. You need to make sure that the club you're going to get is consistent with the way you're swinging or the way you want to swing as well. So after getting yourself physically fit and getting yourself club fit, you need to move on to your technique. Now, the first part of the technique that you need to get right is your setup. If you nail your setup, you're gonna win a lot of the battles that you need to, to actually hit the ball a long distance. Now, with your setup, it's all about ball position, stance, and posture. Now, if when you're getting yourself set up, for this challenge, I've not really changed my grip too much. I've kept it relatively neutral. But for the setup, you just want to be moving your left heel out slightly, getting the ball position just inside the left heel, so it's towing that left foot out, taking a big step with the right, making sure that swing center is quite a long way behind the ball. Now, that is going to allow you to hit up through the actual shot. If your setup was a little bit narrow and your swing center was closer to the ball, it'd be more likely to hit down on the ball. And to hit the ball a long way, you need to be hitting up. So a nice wide stance, my swing center behind the ball, and I'm gonna increase that by actually adding more spine tilt. So really dipping down the right shoulder, raising up the left, and allowing that spine to tilt backwards away from the ball. And this is moving my swing center even further back and allowing me to hit up on the ball even more. With the setup and with the posture, you need to be very, very strong because your posture is going to have to bear a lot of the strain. Now with the posture, I'm keeping my chest and my back nice and straight. I'm adding that little bit of flex in the knees and I'm pushing my hips right back. And I'm feeling athletic. I'm not feeling slouched. I'm not feeling sat down. I'm feeling like I'm ready to go. And my weight is on the balls of my feet and I'm feeling nice and springy. From this position, we can move into the actual technique and the takeaway. So when you've got that set up, your first initial part of the swing is your takeaway. And you've got a really good chance here to get this new technique off to a really good start. Now with your takeaway, there's a couple of things that you really need to nail. You need to get the club moving long, low, and wide away from the body. At this halfway point where the club shaft is parallel to the ground, 
you should feel that club head has been pushed a long way away and it's pretty much in front of the hands when viewed from this down the line view. On my takeaway here, I've kept my weight pretty central. I've not shifted a long way onto my back foot, so I've not swayed away from the ball. I've kept myself quite still and quite centered over the actual ball. So I'm taking it away super wide, super long, super low, club head in front of the hands and club stretched a long way away from my body. In this position here, I can now move on to the rest of the backswing. So after the setup and after the takeaway is completed, I can now move on to the backswing. Now with the backswing, you want to continue the theme of width. So really moving the club up and wide and a long, long way away from the head at the top of the swing. It wants to feel like it's pushed miles away from the body. This width will allow you to build up potential club head speed. If it's in a really narrow position, you're not gonna be able to generate the same amount of power once you move into the transitional stage of the actual downswing. So on that takeaway, pushing it super wide away from the body. Now during this challenge, my swing length has actually increased quite a lot. So I'm going past parallel most times with my club shaft at the actual top of the swing. Now again, this gives me more potential power, but in general, it won't help improve my accuracy. This is, again is another example of a compromise I've had to make between accuracy and distance. But if that club shaft goes a little bit past parallel, it will give you more potential speed coming down. So super wide, super extended with the left arm, nice and full turn, keeping the lower half nice and still. I don't want that lower half to really rotate away either. I want to keep that pretty much in the same position. And that will help build up coil between the upper and the lower body. So super wide, not much lower half movement all the way up to this position. Now coming into the downswing, the transitional phase of this is crucial. It's so, so important because it will get you moving into the ball exactly how you want to. And this is one of the big parts of my swing which I've had to do a lot of work to and it will be similar for a lot of you guys as well. Because this setup and this takeaway has been building up and getting me set up for the power movement into the ball. Now I've got to a very wide position with a big full shoulder turn, really rotating the body away from the ball, the upper body away from the ball whilst keeping the lower half nice and still. Now moving into the ball, I want to be feeling like my energy and my power is moving down into my left leg and into the ground. Now this is the feeling I've been talking about, about again the squat. So moving into the ball, squatting into my left side before bringing the club really close to the body. Now this movement from a wide full turn into a squat and a narrow position where this club is very much lagged. In here you can see the amount of angle between the shaft and the wrist here, this amount of lag angle. This transition into the downswing will now allow me to move into impact and generate masses of power. So with that setup, wide there, take away long and wide, backswing full shoulder turn, super wide, and then that transition where I squat down into my left side and really like that club. Obviously this is a bit of an exaggerated position, but as I squat down and like that club moving into the point of impact. Now through impact, this is where some of the biggest changes have been made within my swing. So I've come down into impact, squatting down, moving into my left side. Now from here, I really start to turn and extend the hips upward. Now this is a power movement made by some of the biggest hitters in the world, especially Rory McIlroy, who pound for pound is probably the longest hitter on tour, kind of versus his side against the other kind of big hitting players. Now what he does wonderfully well, and this is what I've been trying to move into my swing, is he squats down, keeps that leg angle moving down from an inside path before rotating those hips upwards and exploding upwards through the ball as well. That final snap and that final pump upwards of the hips really adds an extra bit of club head speed to the ball. And that is what you need to hit the ball a long way in the basic sense of the word is lots of club head speed and finding somewhere in the center of the club face. So that squat, that movement in, the extension up of the hips, hitting up and out through the ball. Now from here, I really try and feel like I'm extending, 
moving and turning the body as much as possible. If I've actually got the backswing, the transition, and I've moved into impact correctly, then I can really just rotate, turn, and extend the arms as much as possible down towards the target. And my finish position will be all around my upper body, very much angled away to the left-hand side, my hips turn fully and facing all the way down towards the target. In many respects, the follow-through is inconsequential because all the work that has gone into hitting this ball a long way has already passed but your through swing can tell you a lot of information about what has gone before. And if I finish in a position where my hips and my body are fully rotated, and I'm all the way around into this position, I know that I've rotated and turned fully through that shot. And it's all a little bit like that. Out of breath after three swings. <laughs> And that's pretty much what the finished article will look like. Now, I have learned a lot from making these movements into my swing, and I'm certainly gonna be taking the best of what I've learned, especially using that impact more correctly to hit up and out through the ball. But what I'm gonna do with my game now is almost dial the distance back a little bit. If I can hit it consistently, about 320, but actually on the fairway, then I'm gonna be in fantastic positions most of the time. So what I'm gonna do now is learn from my actual swing changes, learn from what I've actually been doing in these videos and try and apply it a little bit more effectively to my game. Because like I said at the very start, I compromise direction when trying to achieve this more distance. So what I'm gonna do now is start to dial it back and try and get these two things working together in unison. Now guys, thank you so much for watching these videos and thank you so much for kind of joining me on this quest, leaving your comments, offering so much support. It's been, it's been amazing actually, it's been awesome. And it's been a project which I've really, really enjoyed doing. What I need to do now is figure out my next one. So I want you guys to comment in the box below, give me lots of suggestions, which a lot of you have already done on the previous video. But the more suggestions I get, the better and the more inspiration it will give me. So guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. And I will see you down here next time. And I'll see you down here next time, hopefully, for another new series. Guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.